What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Brave and Faithful podcast. Uh, today, um, special guest, uh, I served with this man, uh, you know, during my first few years in the Navy, being with the, the Marines, 1-7 specifically. Uh, he's a Marine veteran. He's also an entrepreneur with a couple businesses going on and recently started his own podcast as well. Um, I have none other than Matt Amos. What's going on, brother? Uh, not much, uh, man. How are you doing? I'm good. Um, you know, we were talking before we went live here, and, you know, it's it's been a while, um, you know, about 2006, 2007, when I, when I left Hawaiian Palms. And I know you kind of, you know, continued with, with your service, and we'll we'll talk about that later. Um, sure. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just great to connect and see other, you know, active duty and veterans uh, just doing great things out there, even though, you know, under uh, certain circumstance, circumstances, what happened in the past, you, you, you're just one of those guys that are just, you know, just putting our, our community in a positive light. So I thank you for that. I appreciate that, man. You're, you're doing the same thing. And I think, uh, you know, together we can, uh, we can spread that uh, uh, a little bit more. Awesome. Awesome, man. So, um, yeah. So for those who, um, you know, just I like to talk about uh, the service and kind of like, you know, what they did. Uh, can you just tell our audience, um, you know, when did you join and, um, you know, who were you with and, and deployments and things like that? Sure. Yeah. So I joined uh, in, let's see, December of 2003. No, I actually entered the delayed entry program April of 03. And then, uh, uh, Strangely enough, I was scheduled to go to boot camp over Christmas, and then I got uh, I got booted because they didn't have enough seats uh, <laughs> at, at, at camp. So uh, my recruiter spent a lot of time trying to convince me not to uh, not to leave or to uh, get cold feet. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm good to go just, you know, whenever. So I ended up uh, leaving for boot camp uh, January 4th of uh, 2004. Okay. And uh, then my first uh, duty station was with uh, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines out there in 29 Palms with uh, with you guys. Um, and, uh, did two deployments there. Uh, both of those were to Iraq. And then I took, uh, I reenlisted in 2007 and, um, took a, a I and I builder or instru an inspector instructor billet in Kansas city, uh, just to be closer to home for 18 months. And then, uh, finished out with, uh, first battalion fifth Marines in, uh, at Camp Pendleton. Yeah, deployed to Afghanistan with them. Right. Um, and, you know, just like I said, just to kind of go over your career, right? You've, you've done two deployments in Iraq and then one to Afghanistan. And in Iraq and Afghanistan, you were wounded, you were wounded right? Both, both times. Um, yeah, yeah. So the first time was your uh the second deployment your second deployment in iraq and then your first deployment of Af afghanistan um you know if you don't mind can you share like to the audience who might not know what happened and how were you able to kind of overcome those those uh experiences or those obstacles sure yeah so the uh the first injury um took place uh in august of uh, 2006 uh, we were on a, uh, a foot patrol coming back to the uh, the PB or, or I don't even know what we called it back then, but that I think it was BP. A, a BP yeah, yeah, so it, there were PBs in Afghanistan, but uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, BP Veracruz, and we were we were coming back, and uh, there was a, a daisy chain IED of uh, six one five fives, you know, two in each hole um, dispersed uh, to try to get uh, an entire patrol, and that one um, ended up uh, killing our point man, uh, Jeremy Long. Um, and then I was basically right, right behind him to his left. And then uh, I got a couple of guys behind us with, uh, shrapnel and whatnot. So that was, uh, got medevaced out of there, um, and ended up basically, cause we were, I, I think about 30 days out from, uh, going home and, uh, yeah. got medevaced to, uh, Alkheim or yeah, was it, yeah, Alkheim and uh, was at the uh, hospital there. And then basically did the, or not Alkheim, was it Alkheim? The train station there, wherever we were at. Yeah, I think I got the, Alkheim was the main, yeah. 
yeah so i was i was there and uh and finished out my deployment there at uh, battalion headquarters um and then uh, went home with uh with everybody on that one um you know fast forward uh well so i you know after i came back from that um you know, I had to make a decision if I wanted to uh, reenlist again. And so I talked to my wife. I loved what we did. I loved what we were doing. Right. Um, I thought what we were doing was making a positive impact on the, on the people that uh, were there. Um, I know a lot of people are um, kind of torn about Iraq, but uh, the people that we were able to talk to, the people that uh, we helped wanted us there. They needed us there, but their uh, main objective was to not keep us there any longer than we needed to be there. Right. And so I, I felt very good about what we were doing and had no issues with that whatsoever. And talked with my wife and, and uh, we decided that, uh, uh, you know, I, I wanted to stay in, but I wanted to make sure it was okay with her. And she said, well, you know, I'd, I'd sure like you to be home if you could, but I support whatever you do. And uh, so uh, when I reenlisted, I requested a, an I&I &I billet, um, which was basically non-deployable. Okay. And uh, went with them for 18 months and, and ended up uh, doing a, uh, a little cruise down to uh, uh, Peru um, to train some Peruvian Marines and, and uh, it's called Partnership of the Americas. And uh, my only non-combat deployment, really, and uh, my, my only time on a naval ship, uh, which was the, uh, the Boxer. Um, and that was an incredible experience to be, a, to be able to be on ship. Um, was again there at 24th Marines for uh, about 18 months and then got orders to uh, 1st Battalion, 5th Marines and uh, had basically a year uh, workup uh, with my guys. I was a squad leader at the time, uh, E5, Sergeant. And uh, hey, before before you cover um, your deployment to Afghanistan, um, sure. I just want to go over and kind of, you know, c commend your wife as well. Um, I mean, it's not easy, you know, you're, you're just experience you know you know being um that incident with the ied right uh, you got injured um yeah. you know i just how were you able to convince your wife and i know he was she was she's very supportive and uh cares about you know what you wanted to do and what you you know uh, in, in your career but how were you able to like just let her know and you know convince her even though she you know to her, it might, you know, you going back, you might, there's a possibility, there's always possibility that you might get injured again. How were you able to convince her about that? Yeah, I, I think the 18 months back home kind of kind of convinced her a little bit. Um, but again, she supports whatever I do and I loved what I did. And so she right. didn't want to stand, she didn't want to stand in the way of that. And, uh, you know, funny story, we were, uh, uh, we went to high school together and, uh, uh, you know, when you, when you get out of boot camp or when you're in boot camp, they tell you when you get coming up on your 10 days of leave from boot camp, you know, don't, don't you idiots go out and get married. <laughs> and, uh, well, she and I got married, um, uh, on that 10 day leave and, uh, we're going on, uh, in April, it'll be 17 years. So, uh, um, man, congrats to you. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. Pretty, pretty incredible, especially with the statistics of, uh, military, right. uh, marriages. Um, but, uh, she stuck behind, uh, beside me the whole time. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that. And, uh, you know, no complaints. I mean, we, we are where we are because of, uh, you know, where we've been and what we've done. So right. well, I, mean, I don't think either of us would change it. So, um, you know, going back to what you were saying, so you, you got orders to one five, you said. Yep. And then, um, yep. so you were there for about a year and then you guys deployed to Afghanistan. Yep. Yeah. So I got a, I got a good year of uh, training with my guys. Whereas, uh, you know, my first deployment with one seven, I was, I was with one seven for about 30 days before we before were, were gone to the desert. Well, yeah. yeah. So, um, but, uh, you know, good workup and, you know, good group of guys, uh, great, um, uh, great leadership in that, uh, in that battalion. Um, and I think I was again, you know, in country for, um, right around a little over three months. Uh, and, you know, we were out on a, uh, a foot patrol again and going down a narrow alleyway. 
And I'd sent, uh, you know, five guys, uh, a security team through the alleyway, because, you know, those guys like to ambush on the other side of, a, of an IED. And so, um, or, you know, just the opposite side of an alley, an enclosed area where they've got you canalized and, and you're just basically sitting ducks. And so yeah. I sent a sweet team with a security team through and uh, they didn't, uh, they didn't find anything. And so they, you know, they set up security on the other side and then, uh, I was like, all right, those guys are through. And I wanted to be the first one through to kind of get a visual on the other side of the alleyway. And so I was the next one through and I, I must've just stepped off the line that they had, uh, they had drawn and, uh, you know, low metallic signature. There's no way those guys would have found it. And, uh, I felt the, uh, the ground go soft underneath my feet and then felt the blast and the heat. And, uh, uh, you know, it launched me about 10 feet in the air because uh, I know because I was looking for a trigger man was, uh, because I was that high up and mm-hmm. I was like well there's there's no trigger man so it's uh, we're good there <laughs> you and, had that uh, sense to even look up uh, even though you were up there like you had that sense to just look yeah it, well because you know everything happens in slow motion right so yeah. you're, you're, your mind's going a million miles an hour and you're just processing everything so fast but I uh, didn't see any of that and uh, you know my, my next thought was again are you serious and uh, uh, it basically uh, launched me, if you know what that means, where it just kind of fold, folds you in half and uh, landed on my pelvis. And the, uh, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much, I didn't get, uh, I didn't get knocked out on either, uh, either explosion, which is very fortunate. Um, and uh, so I had, I was conscious the whole time and was able to see what was going on and, you know, letting the guys know, Hey, sweep up to me slowly, wherever mm-hmm. there's one, there's probably more. And uh, fortunately nobody else was hurt in the blast where I stepped on something. Cause that would have, that would have killed me to, uh, to have somebody else injured at, at my foot. And uh, uh, basically they started an IV on me and it, it, I, both my feet were still attached at the time. Um, they were just dangling there. I couldn't move them at all. Um, and, uh, so they started an IV and then I heard the, uh, the call over the radio, you know, Hey, um, you know, urgent surgical double amp. Um, and I was like, Oh, okay. I guess that's where we're at. <laughs> and, uh, and, it, you know, you gotta have a sense of humor about it really. Right, Cause it yeah. is, it is, it is just kind of funny all the little things that go through your head. But, uh, so they, they put me on a, a stretcher and then they got the, uh, the medevac vehicles to the road and then they, they loaded me on like a, a back of a Humvee type of deal and then drove me back to the helo pad, which is what at uh, PB Wishman. And uh, at some point during that uh, transport, my uh, IV had popped out. And so there I'm laying on the helo pad and basically, you know, uh, bleeding out. I got the tourniquets on and everything, you know, I had a, uh, the uh, Corman that was with me um, broke a uh, a minesweeper um, to fashion it into a hasty splint because uh, mm-hmm. my left knee was dislocated, and uh, it's actually a technique that they now teach at the uh, the school um, that the Corman go to. So I thought that was pretty awesome, uh, but very quick thinking on his part to stabilize and splint that knee, um, and uh, but we're back at the helo pad waiting on the uh, the bird to touch down and uh the other corpsman that that uh, was there was like he, you know we need to we need to get a line in him and uh said uh, we need to my veins had collapsed at that point so they they couldn't establish a normal iv and they're like we need to do an io and uh, i was like no no you don't we're i'm good man <laughs> and uh so uh, uh it, <laughs> they 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 brought that thing toward me and I was like, doc, if you touch me with that thing, I'm going to kill you. And uh, he goes, man, I'm sorry. I got to do it. And then right. put that thing in my chest and plunge that, uh, that needle through, um, through my sternum and started the, uh, started the IV and, you know, ultimately saved my life. But fast forward a little bit after coming back, but he didn't talk to me for probably four months, uh, because I think he was honestly terrified that I was going to kill him. Um, <laughs> But, uh, I mean, you know, I, I owe my life really, you know, right. save my life and, and, uh, you know, all credit to you, Corman, uh, for what you do. Cause it's, a, it's a tough job and, and, uh, you guys do a lot and we, we Marines appreciate you for sure. But, uh, you know, um, got on the, 
got on the bird and it was a, a British, um, British bird. And I yeah. was going to, I was going to Bastion and, uh, all, uh, the last thing I remember was getting on the bird and one of the guys saying, we got your mate and I was out. So, uh, woke up in, uh, woke up in launch school. I don't remember anything about Bastion. Um, woke up in launch school a couple of times. Uh, one of my Marines had been uh, hit in a, uh, uh, with another IED a couple of days before, and okay. uh, they they were in a vehicle and had driven over it. So the three of them were uh, uh, concussed pretty bad, and one of them had, had already had like three concussions. And so the protocol was to send them back to launch school to get uh, uh, exams done on their brain and, and yeah, do all that stuff. So he was there, and I got to see him. They woke me up uh, to see him, and uh, then I remember waking up on the airplane on the way to the United States for a little bit, and then uh landed in uh stateside went to bethesda and i don't remember um, a whole lot from bethesda i think i woke up a couple of times because i was basically in a, an induced coma so they'd only wake me up to sign the waivers for surgery and all that mm-hmm. um, and i was in and out of uh, surgery basically every other day so it was the day on surgery day off surgery and uh, i started out bilateral below the knee on both sides and uh, due to bacteria uh, in the dirt, I ended up above knee on my right and below knee on my left um, with a fractured hip, uh, dislocated knee, fractured femur. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that was really about it. Um, I do have one testicle now, which is pretty sweet because it hangs out in the middle. I don't know if that's inappropriate. <laughs> I don't know if that's inappropriate for the audience or not. Uh, but, uh, you know, um, Then, uh, you know, had all my major surgeries done there at uh, Bethesda and then got transferred because we were living in San Diego at the time. And so got transferred over to uh, Naval Medical Center, San Diego or Balboa and uh, finished up all my, uh, you know, I had a couple of more surgeries there that that, uh, weren't very major. And then, uh, uh, well, one of them was major. I did have a colostomy bag for two years and then they reversed that at at, uh, Balboa and uh then basically just kind of a two years of rehab and uh, learning to walk with prosthetics and uh, not doing very well with them. Um, How long was, that was the rehab for you? How long was, was that? So, I, yeah, I spent about two years in rehab. Okay. Um, and, you know, I, I spent, let's see, I was injured in June and I left uh, Balboa in October. Um, so, uh, I was inpatient until from June to October and then uh, was basically kind of in an outpatient uh, treatment type of deal where I would go to my appointments and physical therapy. So I, I was kind of reading um, some of your bio, even while you were in rehab, you also went back to school, correct? Did you, you finish your degree as well? No, I didn't finish my degree. Um, I did go back to school. Um, and I, I started going to school when I was at uh, 24th Marines because it was more of a uh, kind of a seven to four job. And uh, so my uh, my degree path was um, uh, fish and wildlife biology, which is uh, what interests me the most and uh, ended up I don't know, basically having some issues with uh, professors because I was at a school that didn't align with my, uh, my personal values. Okay. And uh, so I, I quit school um, and uh, basically just started doing all the learning on my own, um, you know, reading every, anything I could to, to learn what I needed. Um, and ultimately, you know, a degree for me wasn't in my, um, I didn't need one really for what I wanted to do. I wanted right. to start, my, I knew I wanted to start my own business. Um, the, the fish and wildlife stuff was just for me personally, for my own hunting, um, because I, you know, I've got a small hunting piece, um, here in Kansas and try to manage the wildlife to the best that I can. And that's what I was basically trying to go to school to learn. So, yeah, let's go over that, the business, um, you know, even after, you know, two, um, being wounded two times, you know, your combat veteran, you went through a long rehab, you had two years of rehab, um, and then after that, you were, you got out of the, the Marine Corps. Um, I mean, what kept you, you know, what kept you going? What, and what led you to, you know, starting a business, 
multiple businesses and into what you're doing now. Yeah. You know, uh, I, th I think it was, uh, you know, I had a lot of time to think, um, during my recovery because I was basically laid up for a long, long time. Right. And, uh, you know, just what do I want to do now? Um, and my first, first and foremost, you know, I was like, I want to, I want to hunt. Um, I want to be able to hunt again. So I need to figure that out. And, uh, got involved with uh, an organization called Wounded Warrior Outdoors and they they showed me how to do that and uh, I've used that um, and been able to do all kinds of hunts all over the world um, and kind of through that program um, well let me let me back up so when I when I got out we went through the you know your standard transition course um, that uh, everybody goes through right. and uh, but I Semper Fi Fund uh, took care of me on another one and they sent me to uh, one called Semper Fi Odyssey and it's uh it's run by general jones he's a retired uh, marine corps general and uh it's a, a week-long transition where uh transition course where you are in pennsylvania and that's all it is um, all day every day and they institute all the things they teach you kind of all the things that you need to be successful in life not just in business or um uh, a job um, it teaches you how to be successful you know where you have a, a foundation of faith and you've got the uh, you know you've got your physical and mental well-being and uh, that triangle um, is what leads to success so um, if one of those and the kind of the way they taught it is if one of those is out of balance um, you know life's not going to be too good so if you're you know if you're not keeping up with your uh, physical fitness it's not going to be good if you're not keeping up with your mental fitness it's not going to be good and if you don't have faith in something uh, then you don't have anything to stand on. So um, that really spoke to me, uh, you know, because I am a believer. And uh, I think my faith kind of got me through a lot of that stuff um, to where, you know, and I think I don't have any of that PTSD, fortunately. I don't know um, what that's like. And I sympathize with those guys that do um, because I just, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, but they, they taught that really well. And, uh, uh there were a bunch of people interviewing and then they had, uh, you know, they brought in big corporations to, to interview and potentially offer jobs to veterans at that course. Um, and, but my path was entrepreneurship and uh, there were guys there that helped lead me through that um, and uh, hold me accountable to it. And then on the uh, Wounded Warrior Outdoor side, um, I met so many uh, people that have owned their own business, very successful people. Um, who've kind of mentored me through the process. And uh, that's kind of how I learned how to do everything. Um, okay. in, the, in the course of all that, uh, you know, I struggled with prosthetics. Um, I didn't leave the hospital, you know, walking um, on prosthetics, you know, just going day to day wearing prosthetics. I was using uh, uh, two canes to get around and, and the prosthetics were painful. And uh, took me about three years after retirement. So I retired in 2013 and uh, 2013. Yeah. Uh, but I got on prosthetics basically beginning of 2012. So 2015 um, or late 2014, I, I uh, was at a hunting convention and saw this, uh, this other uh, guy walking around and, and uh, he just, he kept looking at me weird. And uh, I was like, well, he's looking at the leg, you know, cause I'm, I make a big show whenever I walk anywhere with two canes. I just look goofy. And uh, he, he stopped me and he's like, hey, man, uh, you know, how long have you had those legs and, and where do you get them? And, and uh, you know, I told him where I was going and, and what I was doing. And he pulled up his pant leg and showed me that uh, he was an above knee amputee as well. Okay. And uh, he goes, man, you need to go see uh, you need to go see Steve Peoples at uh, Peoples Prosthetics in Wichita. And I was like you know, I've heard the name, but he's not on the VA contract. And so, um, it wasn't on the list of providers that I could choose from initially. And, uh, he's like, well, man, we need to call him right now. And, uh, I was like, man, it's Saturday morning, 10 AM. Nobody wants to be bothered with work at 10 AM on a Saturday morning. So, uh, give me the business card. And I promise, uh, that I will call him on Monday. And, uh, so I took the card and, uh, left the uh, convention and, uh, I live about 45 minutes outside of town. And so, I was like, well, I'm in town and I got a coupon with my admission to that place. And so um, I was like, well, I'm going to stop by and get some uh, arrows for my uh, for my bow um, while I'm here because I'm, I'm not a very good bow hunter. I lose a lot of them and uh, need to buy some more. So I'm standing in line waiting to pay for these uh, these arrows. And 
guy behind me um, taps me on the shoulder and goes, hey, are you a vet? And I was like, yeah, I'm a vet. And we got to talking a little bit. And then he starts asking me about the legs and, and uh, how that happened. And, and uh, I just kind of, you know, whatever, just kind of a general conversation, really. And then paid for my stuff. And as I'm walking out, um, he goes, hey, man, he goes, I just want to tell you thanks for your service. And uh, if you ever need uh, any help uh, with those things, this is kind of what I do for a living. My name's Steve Peoples, and I have a shop oh, wow. here in town. And I was like... I was like, I pulled the card out of my pocket and I go, this Steve Peoples? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. He goes, where'd you get that? And I was like, literally dude, 15 minutes ago um, at the hunting convention. And so uh, it took me about six months to go see him um, just working through the VA system. Um, and uh, the, uh, the first set of sockets he made me, I dropped the canes in his office that day and I haven't used them since. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that, yeah, it was pretty amazing. And that, that right there kind of, uh, uh, jump started again uh my my recovery and uh really made me see that that there were things beyond what i was what i was able to currently do and uh you know i had shortly after that you know i just started my business and then uh, uh steve and i were talking one day and uh tell us about that my... business tell the audience about what business were you yeah working. so that uh uh, so that's a, it's called a admiral's pennant it's a uh, beard oil company um and you know after i retired i just i basically grew the beard and said uh, i'm not shaving again um ever i don't think and uh <laughs> and if you guys are watching this later on on youtube like he's got a pretty sweet beard. <laughs> like you, you yeah check it's, out his beard <laughs> it's, it's grow it's growing back um right. I've, I've trimmed it up a couple of times but uh you know with uh coronavirus going on um i just said screw it let it all go so i've let my hair go i've let my beard go and just whatever it's going to be what it's going to be um but you know good for business too because uh, you know i've got a product that caters to beards right. and so uh, you know started uh started that business back in 2015 um uh, and uh we've been going uh, for the last six years um and no no complaints about that it was uh it's been it's been a learning curve, uh, but especially with trying to figure out social media and all their algorithms and trying to figure out the best ways to advertise and market your product, and right. um, so it's been it's been eye opening. Um, and it was it was meant to be kind of a stepping stone for me. Um, I wanted to start that business because ultimately I wanted to um, open up a uh, uh, kind of like a hunting uh, hunting club. Um, so you've got like, uh, country clubs and stuff like that. Well, I wanted to open up something like that, that had to do with, uh, uh, like a, not, not necessarily a hunting club, but a gun club, um, with, uh, you know, first class accommodations and, you know, place that people would hold weddings at and stuff like that. And, um, that amount of money up front, uh, is, is pretty substantial for a first time business owner. There's not too many people that are going to loan that money to, to somebody um, with no, with no experience. And so I started the uh, beard company as kind of a catalyst for that, but ended up, uh, you know, li life happens and, and things change and you end up uh, kind of falling where you, you, I, I think when you, when you pay attention, you kind of fall into where you need to be. And, uh, mm -hmm. You know, with what those prosthetics uh, did for me, um, and knowing how many people were out there struggling with the same uh, type of issues that I had, and I just didn't know what I didn't know. And right. uh, so, uh, I, I we I started going up to uh, the prosthetics office every day and just talking to new patients and uh, trying to mentor them a little bit, encourage them, um, let them know that hey, man, this is this is just the beginning. Uh, it's going to get a heck of a lot better, you know, and um, and one day I was sitting in there and, and, uh, we were working with a, uh, oh, a patient that was in his uh, mid eighties, um, and, uh, had just, uh, lost his leg above the knee farmer. Um, and, uh, Steve, you know, been trying to explain, uh, a, a technique to him to get that, uh, prosthetic knee to swing. Um, and it, it just wasn't clicking with him. And, uh, so I got up and, and kind of described it to him and, and, uh, he did it, you know, and uh, here's, here's a, uh, and I don't know what it was, you know, seeing the demonstration or, um, just seeing somebody else in that situation, um, kind of take the lead on that and show them how to do it. And, uh, you know, it was, it was 
pretty awesome moment for me to see that uh, kind of light bulb moment for that person. Right. And, uh, you know, it's kind of at the same time, you know, Steve said, well, you know, you keep showing up like this and doing that, you know, we might have to hire you. And uh, I was like, ha ha ha, you know, funny, funny. Cause I just, uh, I just started my company. And uh, so, you know, fast forward just a few short months and uh, I went in and I really thought about that. And I was like, you know, um, I've got this beard oil company and I've got aspirations to, to build this, uh, this gun club, but, uh, maybe that's not what ultimately is in my cards. Okay. And, uh, I was like, maybe I can really impact more people and impact lives. If, if, uh, if I'm here, um, helping people with prosthetics, maybe that's what I'm meant to do. And so, uh, a lot of soul searching and, uh, eventually went back and said, you know, Hey, if you're, if you're serious, let's, let's do this thing. And so, uh, uh, he worked it out and actually created a, a position for me at the office. And, uh, I've been working there since, uh, 2015. Um, and, you know, just being able to see people overcome, uh, their challenges, uh, every day. And so it's, it's, uh, it's awesome to, uh, be able to, to see somebody at their lowest, uh, when they think life's over, um, and encourage them, mentor them and, and see them take those first steps and see that light bulb go off. And then, you know, you fast forward on them six, eight months and, you know, they're outperforming me. They're doing more things than, than I'm able to do, you know, and it's, it's pretty exciting um, and, and humbling to, to be able to be a part of that. Yeah. I mean, I just like God works in mysterious ways, right? Like your chance encounter yeah. with, with, uh, you know, Steve, you said, and then, you know, yep. you just, going back to the uh to his clinic and you know and, and kind of just helping out people and eventually that's what you're you know what you end up doing now is just mentoring and helping others in a in a positive way right like it's it's just crazy how that works yeah I, you know and i think really what it comes down to is you just gotta you you you've basically just kind of got to turn your mind off and listen and right. uh, pay attention to those things you know and not try to force your own path or what you think uh, is best for you but uh uh, listen and have that faith and, and just let that, let, let that faith guide you. Yo, so um, Matt, just talking about, you know, business and, and currently what you're doing now, what would you say has been, uh, I want to say worse, but some of the difficult moments you had and tell us how you, how were you able to overcome those moments? You know, um, in all honesty, and I, I don't mean to, this to sound um, like bravado, um, or, uh, you know, not necessarily bragging, I guess I can't find the right word, but, uh, I, I really haven't had any, uh, major challenges. Um, and I, I really think that that comes from, uh, just being able to be flexible and understand that you can't control everything and that there's a reason that everything happens. And so, uh, not necessarily dealing with the challenge, but dealing with the, the why. Um, so why, why did this happen and what can I do to, uh, to do better? And I can't honestly think of a certain situation where I was like, man, this has just been really tough to get through. Um, you know, the, the, the prosthetics are honestly the, uh, were my biggest challenge. Um, and Steve fixed all that for me. So, uh, I really haven't had too many on the business side of things. Um, it's not that big of a challenge whatsoever, um, you know, as opposed to some of the challenges that people face every day. But mm -hmm. uh, I would honestly say that marketing is my biggest challenge um, because I, I don't understand it. Uh, mm -hmm. I read, I read everything on it. I try to read up as much as I can, but uh, I can't figure that out. So um, I just kind of, uh, well, I guess most recently kind of I was frustrated with um, Facebook and a lot of the social media platforms and, and what they uh, were doing to censor people. Um, and so I, I basically cut, I made the decision to cut all of my advertising on Facebook and not put a penny more um, into their platform and uh, until they, until they fix themselves. And uh, so uh that's, that's pretty much why I started my own podcast. And so I, I guess that would be uh, one of the challenges, the challenges that I had to overcome was kind of that censorship because we are a, uh, uh, you know, a pro America company. We are a, uh, uh, we, we support our military 100%. Um, you know, we love this country, um, even though, um, 
you know, some of the, the leaders that are out there in our government might, might not be our favorite. We, we stand behind those leaders and we, we hope and pray that they make the absolute best decisions for us possible. Um, and, uh, but I ended up basically just kind of starting a, uh, a podcast um, in order to, um, sponsored by Admirals Pennant, in order to uh, kind of take charge of our own advertising, advertising. And we had more avenues to um, get our brand out than just uh, right, Facebook right. and uh, more avenues that if one gets shut down, we have others to, uh, to take up for that. Um, so that's, that's been kind of the biggest challenge recently. Yeah, and look, I just want to highlight what you just said in the beginning there and kind of, I love what your mindset, like your outlook in life. I think that's, that's what it is. It's just your mindset. You have a strong, you have a strong up here, right? Strong mind. And you have uh, such a positive outlook in life that you don't really see, whereas um, some people might, most people might see things as a challenge. You see it more of as like, you know, how do I get past this and how do I overcome this? You know, you don't, and I, I love I love that yeah. mindset. And I, I think, yeah, I, I think you're absolutely correct. I think it's more of a mentality um, than anything else, and and just being uh, trying to remain positive and be thankful in every situation. Um, you know, because I think, it, and I'm the same way. You know, I can get uh, I can get angry. I can get uh, uh, I can get upset about things, but uh, it doesn't do us any good um, right. to to be in that place. Um, and so. I've really absolutely done my best to remain positive um, in everything. And, and uh, you know, especially, and then I don't make uh, resolutions whatsoever, um, but uh, you know, 2020 was a, a difficult year for everybody. And uh, you know, you saw a lot of division um, among our uh, citizens um, and that, that division was basically drawn um, straight through like a, like party lines. And um you know, that's, that's not what we're about. And, uh, you know, I, I found myself, uh, kind of arguing with people on social media, uh, in 2020 about different things. And, uh, uh it just wasn't doing anybody any good, um, because you can't read, um, you can't read inflection. You can't read tone. You can't read sarcasm in a text. Right. Uh, yeah. and so it's very difficult to communicate over, over social media. And so for 2021, I told myself, you know, um, I am going to step back. I'm not going to argue with anybody on Facebook. I'm going to take a positive approach to 2021 and uh, just try to engage people on both sides of the aisle and, and, and try to understand them a little bit more and figure out, again, figure out their why, why they feel certain ways and, and why they do certain things and uh, have a discussion on Facebook and it's, it's been difficult um, because everybody's kind of guarded on Facebook. Um, you make a comment, you ask questions and people automatically assume that you're trying to. You're uh, like attacking them or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're trying to get uh, a buddy of mine called to get a political win. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you know, that's that, you know, I was like, you're exactly right. That, that's what they think. And so um, trying to break down those barriers and have a, have an actual discussion and, and it takes, it takes a while for those to take place. And, and, uh, if somebody and I are, if somebody and I are, are fundamentally different on the way we think, um, uh, I've, I've kind of instituted, uh, what I call coffee and a donut and invite those people to sit down with me and ha have an actual discussion in person where we can actually talk, um, and learn about each other, figure out who we are, you know, where we grew up, uh, where'd we get to where we're at. And, uh, and just have a discussion because it's a lot harder to hate somebody that you know. And uh, even if we have differences of opinion, um, we can still talk and, and find common ground um, that, that we can stand on and, yeah. be, and, be, and be friends on. So uh, that's kind of been my approach to 2020. And uh, even when I, you know, retired going through all that therapy and everything, I, I, I tried to keep uh, a positive mental attitude. And I think I did a pretty good job of it. And I'm turning it up uh, another notch in 2021. And uh, I, I can tell you it's been a heck of a lot better. Um, I'm, I'm a lot more relaxed. I'm a lot less stressed. And uh, I don't worry about it. You know, I don't worry about anything. It's going to take care of itself. Um, as long as those people realize that, hey, you know, it, I, I love this country. I love, um, I love what it stands for. Um, I love what that flag represents. Um, 
and the the guys that fight to uh, guys and girls who fight to, uh, to defend that um and if, if we can talk about that we have that on the common ground and uh, i think we can build a friendship off of that and we just have different views of how that's supposed to work um and i'm open to learning those views and that's kind of my goal for 2021 is learning the other side of the coin yeah i think that's where i think that's where we all needed learn that's where we all need to take uh, advice is like you know just listen listening to no matter what side you're on just yep. open open your ears you know don't yeah, talk for I, a minute and just listen to what they're saying yeah and i did see a, I, I saw a a meme the other day that said uh you uh, uh you're not learning uh if you're talking um, yeah. so shut up and listen and uh okay, that's perfect that's kind of my my mantra for 2021 <laughs> All right, so guys, if you're just listening and talking to uh, Matt Amos, uh, combat wounded combat veteran, um, so Matt, my next question for for anyone that's listening that you know that maybe they're a veteran or they're still active duty and they're you know about to get out, transition into the civilian world, what are some actionable steps that they can you know that can take right now to you know help them in pursuit of whatever they want to do in their next uh, in and their next mission. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, it kind of starts with the transition program that uh, you've got there um, at whatever base that you're at, um, and really paying attention and, and doing your due diligence during that time because there is a lot of time um, during that course to do your own research and and uh, you know the biggest thing that that I've noticed is uh, uh, in anything that I've done, whether it be volunteering for Wounded Warrior Outdoors, um, working for People's Prosthetics, you know, running Admiral's Pennant, um, uh, or, um, you know, even uh, the, the podcast that I have, um, the biggest thing is networking. Um, and if you can, uh, if you can meet people, put yourself out there um, and really be engaged with that person and be, uh, be real with them. Don't try to put up a front, just be you uh, yeah. because um, those, those people, that's what those people are looking for. You know, if they hire somebody who was putting on a front, you know, six months later, they change and they become the real them. Well, that real them's not working out. And so be the real you and let those people hire the, the real you. Um, and, uh, you know, do something that you're uh, passionate about. Don't, don't just try to find the first job. Um, uh, I know it's extremely hard to do in the military. It's extremely hard for me, uh, but save, 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 save your money um, so that when you get out, you've got uh, the ability to uh, look for that job without just jumping into something that takes up all your time where you can't uh, work on personal progress and, uh, you know, searching and, and, and putting in the work to get that job that you want. Um, school um, through the, you know, the military and the GI Bill um, is phenomenal. Um, if, that, if that is your goal, do that. Um, because the incentives to go to school are, are pretty great uh, and you can learn a lot and while you're going to school because uh, you know even a full-time load um, there's still a lot of time when you get out of the military and you go to school I mean you have a lot of free time on your hands and there's a lot of free time to get in trouble yeah. um, but but use that free time to to uh, figure out exactly what you want to do and then start pursuing that immediately because uh, chances are uh, if your job doesn't require a degree, you know, if you're not going to try to be a neurosurgeon or, you know, a, a dentist, um, chances are you, you will find that job before you graduate. And, uh, right. uh, you know, but again, it's just putting yourself out there. Yeah. I think it just, it just goes back to like, you, you control your own destiny, right? Like you, you, you got to find your, your next uh, purpose or passion that, whatever you're looking for, um, whether that be, you know, going through a traditional school or, or even if that thing that you want to do, um, doesn't require school. Um, you just got to, you know, kind of focused. And, and like you said, just take care or, or take advantage of the, uh, programs and the, the, what the military offers, um, you know, with the GI bill, uh, with oh, all absolutely. The, and things like that. So, um, so you mentioned Absolutely, earlier, you know, and, and yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, and be sure that, um, uh, you take advantage of the, uh, the VA. Um, yeah. I know a lot of guys that uh, don't go there because they're like, Oh, I don't rate, you know, I don't want to deal with that. 
get get into the VA, get through. It's it's a painful, painful process, but get through it and do it because that is invaluable to you going down the road. Um, and that can alleviate a lot of stress down the road. So um, I, I highly recommend that to to get all that stuff in order so that you're taken care of. And don't yeah. be afraid to don't be afraid to reach out. There are tons of organizations out there. Don't don't let uh, um, I, I call it. Uh, I, I think I said it the other day and I just like the way it sounded. But uh, don't let pride get in the way of progress. Mm. And, uh, you know, you know, we're big, tough military guys and girls and, and we've been through a lot. And, there, you know, there's nothing in the world could throw at us that we can't handle. Um, but sometimes you need to you need to sit back and say, OK, I need some help. And transition is that time where, where you need some help because a successful transition really sets you up for life. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Don't let pride get in the way of your progress. Um, so, Matt, before we go into our second segment here, um, one final question. What's one thing you want our listeners or viewers to take away from this episode? And if anything, um, you hear it a lot in the military and it sounds cliche and it sounds stupid, um, but positive mental attitude. Um, I, I really think that uh, uh, positivity can uh, can change uh anything it can change the person you're talking to it can change your attitude um and uh, it, it really does change your outlook on life and it's not uh it's not easy and i don't want it to sound easy because it, it is it is a job it's, it's a chore to to remain positive um all the time because there's so many things that are thrown at us that uh, can get us down and uh you know but being positive you know it's just like staying physically in shape um you know, you, you go to the gym, you work out, you're working your muscles, you know, you're, 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 you know, working on that lung capacity, you know, you're staying in shape, you're, you're eating the right things. Um, and if you're not, you should be, um, because that again, um, helps you be more positive is when you feel good, you're going to, uh, mentally feel better. Yeah. And, uh, but that positivity is, is, a you know, you're, you're working out your mental muscle and your mind has to be worked out just as much as your, uh, your body. And, uh, you got to make sure that your mind is in shape. And so if you, you know, if, if you need to talk to somebody, if you need to, um, if you need to study, I would, I would say always be learning um, and pick something up to just interest you and just start reading about it. And uh, if you're like me and, and TBIs have got you to where you can't focus on a book for more than 10 minutes, um, audio books are a great alternative to that. Um, and just work that mental muscle to, uh, to be as positive as you can all the time and people will radiate to that. And I think that, um, you know, a lot of opportunities come from just being positive. Um, the second part of that I would say is, is don't be out for yourself. Hmm. Um, always be looking to help someone else. Um, because, uh, it's easy to get focused on our own problems. Um, and I know that, uh, from personal experience, it's easy to go internal. Um, like they talked about uh, in the Marine Corps, all the time you know he's gotten internal he's got internal uh, don't don't go internal think external and, and and look for those around you that need some help and, and latch on to them and help them through their time of need because that's uh, ultimately it's a it's it's kind of like selfish giving because it makes you feel better about yourself and uh, you realize that your problems um, aren't as big as as they they seem to be so uh, and, and that's been kind of uh, where I've really um made progress in in uh, my transition because transition lasts from the day you get out of the marine corps all the way through i mean it, yeah. it, that that whole time is a transition process till the till the day you put they put you in the ground yeah there is no uh, end to transition <laughs> no because yeah. you know things are always changing the right. the civilian life is, is is crazy you know things happen um you know COVID is a perfect example people get laid off and you've got to find new ways to do things and uh uh, but remaining positive and looking to help uh, others in those inst instances uh, really uh, will help you out mentally and help you stay more positive, which is ultimately what I think the, uh, the purpose of, uh, or the, uh, what I hope people will get out of this episode. Yeah, I love that message, man. That's a great message to send. I mean, even though, like you said, um, it might seem simple, um, a lot of people don't really uh, stay in that positive mindset because, your, your, your mind, your mindset, your, your brain is your strongest muscle. So um, we should flex it more often. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and think, you know, uh, just use that and work it out because it is just like the, uh, the, 
the rest of your body. You know, you've got to work it out in order to maintain it. It's awesome, man. Um, all right, so Matt, so this are going into our next episode. This is what I call the fast five, this, uh, same five questions I ask all my guests. Um, are you okay. ready? I'm ready. All right. So first question, what's one hobby you enjoy? Man, hunting is, uh, is, is it, uh, that's, uh, that's my favorite pastime. Um, if, uh, you know, a lot of my friends, you know, if I'm not available for weeks at a time, yep, he's hunting. Um, and I've, I've been fortunate enough again through WWO when we're outdoors to, uh, to do that. Um, and kind of set me up to, uh, where I've got my own place, um, which I actually bought back in 2007. Mm. Um, and, uh, uh, if, if I'm not home and you can't reach me, there's, there's a pretty high probability that that's where I'm at. You're not hunting. <laughs> I'm hunting or, or, or thinking about hunting or yeah. planning for the next hunting season. That's it. Awesome, man. So next question here, if you had to choose one person dead or living to hang out with for one day, who would it be and why? Uh, well, I, I, I like this question. Um, you know, and, and uh, I'm going to put a caveat out there. So, uh, the, the person that I would like to meet most is obviously Jesus Christ. Uh, but I know that at the end of the day, um, at the end of my road, I'm going to meet him. Um, and so, uh, one person, uh, alternate to that would be, uh, Phil Robertson. Um, the, uh, he's the, uh, patriarch of, uh, the Robertson family, uh, duck, uh, duck dynasty. Duck dynasty. Okay. Um, and, uh, the, he, he is basically uh, kind of, to me, like uh, a very wise um, individual who started up from uh, rough beginnings and uh, found his passion, which was hunting ducks. He had the opportunity to play uh, professional football. Um, matter of fact, uh, when he was in college playing football, he started in front of Terry Bradshaw mm. uh, and uh, was better than Terry Bradshaw. Terry Bradshaw has even said that uh, himself but his passion was hunting ducks. And so he gave up, uh, uh, he gave up an NFL career to go hunt ducks. And, uh, uh, to me, that is probably the coolest thing in the world. Um, started, uh, building duck calls and, uh, the, the rest is kind of history, you know, from duck commander and, and, uh, being very successful in the duck call world, um, to, uh, duck dynasty, the show. Um, mm -hmm. and, the way that he is uh, with his family, the faith that he has, um, and uh, uh, just just to the way that he looks at things, I think is incredibly interesting. And I think he would be uh, an incredible person just to sit down and, and talk to. That's I didn't know about that, um, his college career, um, playing with, with Terry Bradshaw. Uh, it's interesting yeah. to know. Yeah. Um, and again, it just goes back to uh, what you just mentioned. It's passion, right? If you've, if you're passionate about something, you know, you might find your calling in that, in that Absolutely. aspect. Yep. Absolutely. Pursue that passion. All right. So next question, Matt, uh, recommend a book for our audience to read. Oh, shoot. Uh, well, um, I've, I've read a, a few good ones recently, but uh, I am going to go with, um, it's called The Last Undercover by Bob Hamer. Um, and he uh, I, I've had the opportunity to, see, opportunity to meet Bob. He came and visited um, while I was in the hospital and would drop his books off uh, for us to read while we were laid up. And uh, very unassuming guy, very humble guy, and uh, spent 26 years in the FBI um, as an undercover agent and uh, wrote a book about his, uh, his last undercover uh, assignment, which was infiltrating a, uh, uh, a pedophile ring um, and, uh, getting a bunch of those guys thrown in prison and, uh, basically, uh, dismantling that group, uh, from what it was, they're still active, uh, but they are a fraction, um, of what they once were. And, uh, it's, it's not, it's not a book for the faint of heart. Um, mm. but you do realize that, uh, that those people are out there. And, uh, I believe our, our kids are, are one of our most valuable assets, and we need to protect those kids and listen to those kids um, and, you know, prevent that type of trauma from happening to those kids. 
Um, and that, that book kind of gives you an insight to, uh, uh, to that lifestyle and what those, uh, what those people think and how they, and how they work. Um, an incredible book. Um, and like I said, not for the faint of heart. And again, that's the last undercover. So make sure you guys check that out. Yeah. All right. So next question, what's your favorite quote and why? Favorite quote, favorite quote. Uh, I've been using it now since 2011. Uh, and it came to me from, uh, one of the Marines that I served with, uh, that, uh, uh has also written uh, a book. His name's uh, Brandon Dillon. Um, and the, I think the name of his book, and he's going to shoot me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the mad ramblings of a joker. Um, but, uh, he's an extremely good poet, but I remember, um, no matter what happened, if I was, you know, talking smack to him or somebody else was talking smack to him, um, he'd bow up and he'd say, don't talk about it, be about it. Hmm. And uh, I've, uh, I've used that quote in life. I don't know how many times it's my favorite quote. Um, don't talk about it, be about it. Uh, you know, the, I think there's a lot of, a lot of talk that goes around and not enough doing. And uh, hmm. I, I really, I really appreciate that quote. Um, and coming from uh, a guy like Brandon, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome that uh, he's my favorite quote. Don't talk about it and be about it. It's plain and simple right there. Yep. All right. So Matt, uh, last question here. Where do you see yourself in a year, five years, or even 10 years from now? Man, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I, I really feel um, in all honesty that I am where I'm supposed to be. Um, and so I am probably going to be doing the same thing um, in 10 years that I'm doing right now. Um, you know, with uh, maybe some minor changes here and there with uh, with business and podcast and, and uh, everything else, you know, maybe something else comes along that uh, I like and I get into that. Uh, but I see myself always being there, um, uh, helping other people, um, especially on the prosthetic side. Uh, the company I work for is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and if, if anybody out there is struggling with prosthetics, uh, look us up, come see us. We have, uh, you know, we have, we see people from, uh, 18 different states uh, from Hawaii to Alaska to Florida um, that, that come see us here in uh, Wichita, Kansas um, for their prosthetic needs. And, um, you know, I, I really think that that's, that's really what I'm here to do because I, I think I was put through those struggles with prosthetics to know um, what those people are going through yeah. um, in order to provide uh, a little bit of hope for them. Um, and to see them, you know, be like, man, I've been everywhere and not having any success and to come here and, and walk out and be comfortable and, and see, again, see that light bulb go off. Um, it's, it's a pretty amazing thing to see. And I don't see myself giving that up anytime soon. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, man. Can you, can you just mention again, uh, the name of uh, the company and also tell us a little bit about your podcast that just came out. Yeah. So it's uh, it's people's orthotics and prosthetics and it's P E E P L E S. Um, and you can, find us at peoplesop.com uh, and shoot, give us a call uh, nine times out of 10, you're going to end up talking to me anyway. I'm kind of a patient relations guy. Okay. Um, and so uh, any questions, just ask for me and I'll be able to guide you through whatever you need. Um, and uh, the podcast, um, you know, it's called a, it's hard headed podcast and it's a, it's a group of buddies. Um, uh, we've known each other for a while. And uh, one of them uh, just got laid off uh, during the whole coronavirus deal, um, lost his job. After, uh, he was a, a corporate executive for uh, 20 years with the same company and got laid mm -hmm. off and uh, or not laid off, but got let go. And uh, uh, he was looking for a job. And, and uh, I tried to do everything in my power because uh, he's, he's going to listen to this. I'm going to regret my words, but uh, he, he's an incredibly intelligent individual. And uh, I thought he would be a great benefit to our company. And uh, fortunately, we were able to uh, bring him on board. And we were just sitting there talking one day and talking about the podcast that we like to listen to and thought that uh, there was room for another one um, to uh, to kind of cover um, kind of current events. Um, and so we have three segments on our podcast. We have a What's on Your Mind. Um, 
and then we go through a top three list where we just pick top three anything and then uh, the three of us give our top three options in that category okay. and then we, we end with a good word to end everything on a positive note um and so we i think we're up to episode 12 or 13 uh now um, so we haven't been doing it as long as you uh but we're trying to figure it out it is right. uh there's a lot to figure out yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh uh you know but again it's just uh three guys and we want our listeners to feel like they're a part of the conversation and so um you know, if, if you, it's available pretty much on any podcast platform. And uh, we just want you to sit back and feel like uh, you're just part of the, the discussion. And that's kind of our goal. That's awesome, man. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, hard-headed podcast. Um, so Matt, this has been an awesome episode. I appreciate you for, for sharing your story um, and just, you know, having such a great mindset in life, um, even though, you know, some, you, ex, you had these experiences, uh, during deployments, um, you know, it didn't keep you down. Uh, like I said, you had that positive mental attitude that you always, um, you always display. And I commend you, man, for what you're doing now, um, and helping others and also venturing out and, and doing your own thing in your business. Um, you know, before we go here, I just want to ask uh, where can our audience where can they st stay in touch with you where can they find you so uh i'm, I'm pretty easy to find i'm on uh, I'm, I'm on facebook it's just matt amos and then you'll see a picture of me shooting a shotgun um that one's me uh you know and then uh obviously uh admirals pennant www.admiralspennant.com and then uh hard-headed podcast on any platform that uh, that you listen to um, and you can comment uh, on any of those things and uh, you'll you'll find me i'm pretty easy easy guy to find and easy guy to talk to and i you know i'm, I'm not much of a phone call guy but i am uh, i am good at emails texts and uh i'm really good at those <laughs> awesome man and again thank you for your time i'm honored to serve with you and guys make sure you check out um admiralspennant.com and also hard-headed podcast on all the podcast platforms uh, matt thank you and till then take care appreciate you thank you so much and i, I appreciate what you do and everything you've done and i, I really like what you're going uh, with, with what you've got going with uh, your mental and physical fitness as well i think what you're putting out is, is a great product and sharing stories of positivity i think is, is what this world needs right now so i appreciate you doc and uh good yeah, i mean i'm, I'm just I'm, I'm kind of blown away man i really appreciate you i really do Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, and like I said, man, anything I can do to help with with your podcasts and, and things like that, just just let me know. You do the same. I appreciate you. All right, brother. All right, guys. Take care.